Mr. Speaker, <coughs> I beg to move the following motion, standing in my name. Whereas, no, no, Mr. Speaker. Whereas it is provided under Section 3 of the National Savings and, and Development Bonds Act, Cap 15.25, the Act, that by the authority of a resolution of Parliament, the Minister responsible for finance may raise by the issue of savings bonds inside and outside St. Lucia monies up to the amount of $2,400,000,000 for financing such capital or other expenditure and for such debt refinancing as he or she determines. And whereas it is further provided that under section four of the act that the bonds shall be issued in such form and on such terms and conditions as the minister responsible for finance directs. And whereas the minister of finance considers it necessary to raise on the regional government securities market or for private placement at a maximum interest of 7% per annum, the amount of say 2,100,000 for financing the 2023-2024 budget, the amount of 433,500,000 for refinancing for refinancing existing debt. We resolve that Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to raise on the regional government securities market also a private placement at a maximum rate of 7% per annum the amount of 42,100,000 for financing the 2023-24 budget and the amount of $443,500,000 for refinancing existing debts. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the resolution before, before us today is to seek approval for the government of St. Lucia to borrow by way of bond financing as follows. 32.1 million for refinancing the 2023 budget for the issuance of bonds on the regional government securities market for private placement at a maximum rate of 7%. Mr. Speaker, I want to make it clear that the only extra borrowing is the $32.1 million on the bonds market. You may recall, Mr. Speaker, that we took a, a position that we would financing our budget through longer-term instruments instead of short-term instruments, Mr. Speaker. And that, is, that, that policy decision is even more important now. It was a strategic decision that we took that was necessary because you know now, Mr. Speaker, how interest rates are fluctuating and a lot of them are fluctuating in an upward direction. So <coughs> the, the, the decision to anchor governments, financing government projects through longer term instruments, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> the wisdom of that, the wisdom of that decision is clear, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> the resolution also seeks, Mr. Speaker, to raise 433.5 million for refinancing existing debt for the issuance of bonds on the regional government securities market or for private placement at a maximum rate of 7%. Mr. Speaker, again, the interest rate is important, Mr. Speaker. 7% maximum rate. And again, we have to hope that because of circumstances way beyond our control, Mr. Speaker, these interest rates may change. And it's something that we have to consider, and it's something that we as a government have to look at closely, Mr. Speaker. Already in our in our in analysis of our expenses, we've had to increase <coughs> to I think 131 million, Mr. Speaker, our expenses on interest, which may change, Mr. Speaker. And that is because of circumstances that we have no control over. And now, with what's happening in the United States, about, according to the debt ceiling that we have issues in the, in the US, Mr. Speaker, you never know <coughs> what might happen to interest rates because of that, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> 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 
Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> accessing funds from the regional, the RGSM, has shown a reduction in the cost of borrowing to the government of St. Lucia. This is significantly beneficial in light, as I said, <coughs> of the raising interest rates on the national capital market, Mr. Speaker. The government is optimistic <coughs> of successfully undertaking the 2023 budget borrowing requirement of $2.1 million from the capital market to finance this year's fiscal budget, Mr. Speaker. Investor confidence in the government of St. Lucia papers remains high, and we are optimistic, and we expect this to continue in this budget year, Mr. Speaker. This is the, the lowest amount which we had to raise on the capital market for 10 years. The recent GDP growth rate of 18.1%, coupled by the projected increased economic growth, have positioned St. Lucia for positive increases in revenue and grant funding, thereby reducing our reliance on debt, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to repeat, because of the economic growth that we are experiencing in the country, because of the growth in revenue, Mr. Speaker, because of the overall management of the economy, there is high demand for St. Lucia's paper. There is very high demand for our paper, Mr. Speaker. The investors have shown confidence in our paper. That, 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 happened, that, that was happening last year and this year because of our projections, Mr. Speaker. And that they, we believe that that confidence will remain high and we'll be able to successfully borrow the $32 million on, on the market, Mr. Speaker, on the RSM, based on our experience and based on what's happening in our economy, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, in terms of borrowing on the, on the short term on the RSM, we think we have no issues as far as that's, that is concerned, Mr. Speaker. And that's not what we are saying. That's what the market is saying. Because as soon as our bonds reach the market, they sell very quickly, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the other, to, as you know, we, we projected that you would borrow $288.7 million to finance the overall budget. So out of that, $256.6 million will come from long-term instruments. $256 million for long-term instruments and $32 million from short-term insurance, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, some of these loan funds are already allocated to projects and have started disbursements and are expected to continue, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, again, with this, these long-term loans, they are for a longer period and we hope that they are not unduly affected by what's happening in the interest rates in the market, Mr. Speaker, which we have no control of. So we're confident that we'll raise the 288.7 million to fund our projects, Mr. Speaker. What's important is implementation. We have to get these projects off the ground, Mr. Speaker. The finance is available, but we have to get the projects off the ground, Mr. Speaker. And I urge every minister to look at the projects in their respective ministries and work with the poor men secretaries to get these projects off the ground. Our rate of implementation, Mr. Speaker, is still what is still not what we are desiring, Mr. Speaker. And I come to a bugbear, which is the Millennium Highway project. The Millennium Highway, the Millennium Highway Mr. Speaker, is more than a year overdue. A project that funding is available, funding is available, funding was available, Mr. Speaker, but we risk, we risk the worst happening if we cannot get this project going, Mr. Speaker. And I know the Minister of Infrastructure is on the, uh, on, on the ball. We have, I have told him that we need to get some solution to this problem, Mr. Speaker. The time for excuses is over. We have to make a break. We have to make a break, Mr. Speaker, because a project of that importance cannot be one year overdue, Mr. Speaker, with no sign of completion. The bridge that was part of that project, the bridge is completed, waiting for the highway to connect to the bridge, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, talking about implementation, that project comes to mind. 
Another project that we have to deal with implementation on, Mr. Speaker, is the UBEC project, Mr. Speaker. Again, we have to ensure, Mr. Speaker, that in the UBEC program, unleashing the blue economy, the money that we have available for that project, the Ministry of Agriculture will have to ensure that we use that money for the purposes that the money was determined for. We have the financing, the financing available, we have implementation, Mr. Speaker. And I held, I held a meeting with the World Bank this week, and they were lamenting the rate of implementation, Mr. Speaker. So much so, they have decided that, that they will help us in procurement, so we can get our procurement do our improvement in a, in, the, in a fashion that they can approve so we can get these projects going, Mr. Speaker. Talk about projects, Mr. Speaker. The DVRP, which is the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, that project is coming to an end at the end of next month. That was, uh, that was one of the largest um, grant funding, the largest funding, loan and grant funding that we've had for a long time. That project is coming to an end, Mr. Speaker. So we hope that the World Bank will, after the post-project review, look favorable upon us to see if we can extend that project because there's still quite a bit of infrastructural work to do in the country, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, the word is implementation. That's the word, implementation. And we hope that this budget, our rate of implementation, can improve, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the 433.5 million represents instrument maturing which need parliamentary approval. Out of the abundance of clarity, it is not new loans. It is not new money. It's a bonds that are in the system that need to be refinanced. That is not, it will not increase our debt to GDP ratio. Let me make it be clear, Mr. Speaker. Let me make it be clear. The 433.5 million represents instruments maturing which will need parliamentary approval for, its re for them to be reissued. It is not new money. The government's borrowing requirements, Mr. Speaker, are 288.7 million, 32.1 million in short-term paper, and 256.6 million in long-term loans, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Governor of St. Lucia is confident of successfully undertaking the 2023 borrowing requirement from the capital market to finance the budget. We, we believe, Mr. Speaker, that because of the buoyancy of, of, our, of our economy, we can maintain interest rates of not more than 7% to continue financing the, the budget, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, on this note, I would ask members to, to, support, to support us, Mr. Speaker, in looking for $2.1 million of new money and $433.5 million for refinancing existing debts for the issuance of bonds on the regional securities market, Mr. Speaker. I thank you.